Welcome to my channel. Subscribe and enjoy my new stories every day. The office was transformed for the annual corporate party, an extravagant affair of twinkling lights and cascading streamers. Laughter and music flowed through the air, blending with the scent of catered hors d'oeuvres. I'd been looking forward to this night, a chance to unwind with my colleagues, to celebrate our small victories. But as I scanned the crowd, a knot began to tighten in my stomach. There she was, my wife, Lisa, gliding across the dance floor, her laughter a sweet melody against the booming bass. But she wasn't alone. Her boss, Tom, had a hand resting on her lower back, guiding her with an intimacy that made my heart race in a way I didn't like. I dismissed the gnawing feeling in my gut, telling myself it was just a friendly corporate celebration. Hey, man. You coming, a colleague called out, snapping me back to the moment. I plastered on a smile, joining the group. Yeah, just taking it all in, I said, my eyes still lingering on the dance floor. Looks like your wife is having a blast, he said, chuckling. You should join her. Yeah, sure, I replied, forcing laughter as I tried to shake off the unease. Moments later, I grabbed a drink and took a step closer, the music enveloping me like a shroud. But as I watched them, the atmosphere shifted. Lisa twirled, her hair catching the light, and for a split second, she looked over at me. Our eyes met, and I expected a smile, maybe a wink. Instead, her expression was unreadable, a fleeting shadow passing over her features before she turned back to Tom, who was leaning in too close. I swallowed hard, the knot in my stomach tightening into a fist. My fingers tightened around the glass. What was happening? Later, I leaned against the wall, pretending to check my phone, but my gaze was glued to them. Tom leaned closer, whispering something in her ear. Lisa giggled, her hand brushing against his arm. I hated how the sight ignited a flame of jealousy I hadn't felt in years. Then, it happened. They slipped away into a quieter corner of the venue, the kind of corner that felt off-limits, hidden. My heart raced as I followed, the crowded dance floor fading behind me. My pulse throbbed in my ears, and I forced myself to breathe. Peering around the edge, I caught them in a moment I wished I hadn't seen. Tom's hand slipped under Lisa's blouse, fingers teasing the skin beneath. My breath caught in my throat, and the world around me spun. The laughter and chatter of the party faded into a muffled hum. Betrayal pierced through me like a knife, sharp and unyielding. Hey. You okay? A voice broke through the haze. It was Mark, my closest friend at the company, leaning against the wall beside me, concern etched across his face. I forced a smile, but it felt like a grimace. Just, lost in thought, I managed, though the reality was far more devastating. Come on, let's hit the bar. You need a drink, he urged, pulling me away from the scene. As we moved through the crowd, my mind raced. I felt like a volcano, pressure building, ready to erupt. You don't know what I just saw, I murmured. Tell me, Mark prompted, stopping us near the bar. I hesitated but then blurted out, it's Lisa. She's with Tom. I think they're. Mark's brow furrowed. What do you mean? I mean, I saw him, touching her, I said, my voice low but laced with anger. Dude, that's messed up, Mark replied, his expression shifting to concern. What are you going to do? I took a deep breath, the enormity of the situation crashing over me. I didn't just want to confront her, I wanted retribution. The thought spiraled into a plan that took shape in my mind, dark and consuming. I'm going to ruin her life, I said, the words spilling out before I could think. She'll regret this. I'm done being the fool. Are you serious? Mark looked taken aback. Maybe you should talk to her first, find out what's really going on. No, I snapped, the tension boiling over. I've seen enough. She's made her choice. As the night wore on, the laughter and cheers of the party faded into a distant roar. My mind was a whirlwind of betrayal and anger, 
a storm brewing just beneath the surface. I could already feel the pieces of my revenge falling into place, dark and sweet like poison. Lisa would pay for this. The facade of our life together would shatter, and I would be the one to wield the hammer. The anger fueled me, igniting a fire I didn't know I possessed. Let's go, I said, grabbing my drink and heading toward the exit. I could feel the weight of the decision settling on my shoulders, a burden I was willing to bear for the sake of my pride. As I stepped outside into the cool night air, I knew this was just the beginning. The path ahead would be dark, but I was ready to embrace it. After all, in the face of betrayal, the only choice was to fight back. The next morning dawns bright and indifferent, a stark contrast to the storm brewing inside me. I sit on the edge of the bed, staring at the wall, the events of last night replaying like a broken record in my mind. The more I think about it, the more the fury rises. Are you up? Lisa's voice cuts through the silence, her footsteps soft on the hardwood floor. I can hear her moving about in the kitchen, oblivious to the chaos swirling in my mind. Yeah, I reply, my voice gravelly. I can't bring myself to look at her yet. I need to gather my thoughts, form a plan. She pokes her head into the bedroom, her hair a tangled mess from sleep. I thought we could grab brunch at that new place downtown. They have amazing mimosas, she says, a bright smile lighting up her face. Sure, I reply, the word tasting like ash in my mouth. As she turns to leave, I catch a glimpse of her, the sunlight framing her figure. It hits me how deceptive appearances can be. She looks so carefree, so blissful. But I know the truth now, and I can't let it slide. Lisa, I say, the weight of my voice surprising me. She turns, her smile faltering. Yeah. I. I don't think I'm in the mood for brunch. Her brow furrows, confusion creasing her forehead. Oh. Is everything okay? I take a deep breath, feeling the tension coiling tighter. Not really. I think we need to talk. Her expression shifts from confusion to concern, and I can see the gears turning in her mind. Okay. What's wrong? I saw you last night, I say, my heart pounding against my ribs. With Tom. A shadow crosses her face, and for a moment, I think she'll deny it. I don't know what you mean, she stammers, but her eyes betray her. Don't lie to me, Lisa, I say, rising from the bed. I saw you dancing with him, and then I saw his hand under your blouse. Her cheeks flush, and she opens her mouth to speak, but no words come out. Do you have anything to say? I press, my anger simmering just beneath the surface. I was just. Just what? I interrupt, my voice rising. Just being flirty. Just having fun. Because that's not what it looked like to me. She takes a step back, the realization settling in that this isn't going to end well. It was harmless. I didn't mean anything by it. Harmless. I scoff, incredulous. You're kidding yourself if you think that was harmless. What do you think I am, blind? Please, can we talk about this calmly, she pleads, her voice trembling. I shake my head, the anger bubbling over. Calmly. You expect me to be calm after what I saw. After what you did. I didn't do anything, she insists, though her voice wavers. Then why did you look so guilty just now? I challenge, stepping closer. Why do you think I'm so angry? Because you're being irrational, she shoots back, her own frustration spilling over. You're jumping to conclusions without knowing the whole story. Enlighten me, I say, crossing my arms. What's the whole story? She hesitates, and for a moment, I can see the conflict in her eyes. It was a mistake, okay? We were just having fun. Tom's been really supportive at work, Anne. Supportive? I laugh bitterly. Supportive doesn't involve groping my wife in public. Stop it, she cries, her voice breaking. I didn't ask for this to happen. 
It was just a moment. I love you, and you know that. The words sting, a reminder of the trust that's been shattered. Love? What does that even mean now? Because I don't feel it from you. I turn away, the urge to scream, to lash out, burning in my chest. This isn't how it was supposed to go. The life we built together, the plans we made, it's all crumbling before me. I can fix this, she says, her voice softer now, almost desperate. I'll talk to Tom. I'll tell him to back off. We can get through this. Just, give me a chance. But I can't see a way back. You've already made your choice, I say, the finality of my words hanging heavy in the air. You chose him. Lisa's face crumples, tears brimming in her eyes. No, please don't say that. I didn't mean for it to happen. I don't care about your intentions anymore, I retort, the coldness in my voice shocking even me. You need to understand that things are different now. As she stares at me, I can see the realization hit her, I'm serious. This isn't just a fight. It's a turning point. I need some space, I say, my voice firm. I'll be at Mark's. Where are you going, she asks, a note of panic creeping into her tone. Anywhere but here, I reply, grabbing my jacket and heading for the door. I don't look back. Outside, the cool air washes over me, invigorating and bitter. I can't shake the image of her laughing with Tom, the way they moved together like they were the only two people in the world. It's infuriating. I want to scream, to smash something. Instead, I pull out my phone and text Mark. Need to talk. Can you meet? His reply comes almost instantly. Sure. My place. I nod to myself, the plan forming as I head toward my car. The feelings roiling inside me shift from shock to resolve. This isn't just about confronting her, it's about regaining control of my life. I know I can't let this slide. I need to make her feel what I'm feeling. Betrayal is a heavy burden, and if she thinks she can just walk away and scathed, she's sorely mistaken. As I drive to Mark's, a sense of clarity washes over me. I may not know all the details yet, but I know one thing for sure, this isn't over. I will make her understand the cost of her choices. And when I do, she will wish she had never crossed me. Mark's apartment is quiet when I arrive, the kind of silence that's both comforting and oppressive. He greets me with a concerned look, his brow furrowed. You okay, man? I shake my head, running a hand through my hair. Not even close. We settle onto the warm couch, the weight of the conversation heavy in the air. What happened? Mark asks, leaning forward, his expression serious. I saw Lisa with Tom at the party, I say, feeling the anger swell again. They were dancing too close, and then, I pause, the image flashing in my mind. Then I saw him touch her under her blouse. Mark's eyes widen. Damn. That's, brutal. Yeah, and she's trying to play it off like it was no big deal, I snap. Like it was just harmless fun. I can't even look at her right now. What are you going to do, he asks cautiously. I take a deep breath, the anger simmering. I want revenge. I want her to feel what I felt when I saw that. I want her to regret this. Mark nods slowly. I get it, but revenge can get messy, man. You sure you want to go down that road? It's not just about me anymore, I insist. It's about showing her the consequences. She thought she could betray me and just walk away. I won't let her get away with it. Mark leans back, contemplating my words. Okay, what do you have in mind? I've been thinking, I say, my voice low, plotting. I could make things uncomfortable for her at work. Maybe I could leak some rumors about her and Tom. Make it clear to everyone that she's not the perfect wife she pretends to be. Mark raises an eyebrow. That's risky. It could blow back on you too. Let it blow back, I say, my voice hardening. 
I'm done playing nice. She's turned our lives into a joke. I want her to understand what she's done. All right, but you need to be smart about it, Mark warns. You don't want to get yourself in trouble. Trust me, I reply, a plan forming in my mind. I'll be discreet. No one needs to know it's coming from me. I just need to plant the seed and watch it grow. Sounds like you've thought this through, he says, a hint of admiration creeping into his voice. I have, I say, leaning in. But I need your help. I need you to help me gather information, find out what people are saying about her at work. Consider it done, Mark agrees, a hint of excitement sparking in his eyes. Just be careful. If this gets out of hand. I know, I know, I cut him off, waving my hand dismissively. I'll keep it under wraps. I just need a little time to set everything in motion. As we discuss the details, I feel a rush of adrenaline. This isn't just about revenge anymore, it's a game, and I'm ready to play. I can almost visualize Lisa's face when the truth starts to unravel. The betrayal she inflicted on me will become her downfall. Mark leans back, contemplating our plan. What else do you want to do? You can't just ruin her reputation at work and leave it at that. Of course not, I say, my mind racing. I want her to feel the weight of this. I want her to think I'm the only person who ever really cared about her. I'll make her realize that she threw everything away for a fleeting moment with Tom. What do you have in mind? Mark asks, intrigued. I'm thinking about sabotaging her little escapades with Tom, I say, smirking at the thought. I could send her cryptic messages, make her think someone knows what's going on. Keep her on edge. Dude, that's diabolical, Mark laughs, his eyes lighting up. But it might just work. You really think she'll start to panic? Absolutely, I reply, feeling a dark satisfaction swell within me. She'll start second-guessing everything. And I'll be there, the supportive husband, while she unravels. Mark nods, the enthusiasm growing in his voice. Let's do this. But remember, we need to keep it subtle. If it looks like you're the one pulling the strings, it could blow up in your face. Agreed, I say, the wheels in my mind turning. I'll keep my distance, make it seem like the pressure is coming from all sides. And while she's busy trying to save her reputation, I'll be right there, ready to pull the rug out from under her. Just promise me you'll be careful, Mark urges, his tone serious. You don't want to lose control. I can handle it, I assure him, feeling a surge of confidence. This is about taking back my life. It's time she feels the consequences of her actions. As the evening stretches on, we plot and scheme, weaving the threads of our plan together. With each idea, I feel a sense of empowerment growing within me, drowning out the pain of betrayal. I'm no longer the victim, I'm the architect of my own retribution. When I finally leave Mark's apartment, the night is thick with possibility. I know the road ahead will be fraught with challenges, but I'm ready to embrace the darkness. I drive home, my heart pounding with a mix of fear and excitement. The game has begun, and I intend to win. The weeks pass, a blur of tension and calculated chaos. I weave my plan into motion, planting seeds of doubt and whispering rumors that spread like wildfire through the office. Lisa's carefully curated image begins to crumble. At first, she seems oblivious, but soon, the subtle shifts in her demeanor tell me everything I need to know. She's starting to feel the pressure. Have you heard the latest about Lisa? A colleague says to me during a lunch break, the excitement in her voice evident. People are saying she's been spending a little too much time with Tom. I feign surprise, masking the delight bubbling inside. Really? I hadn't heard that. Oh, it's everywhere, she replies, lowering her voice. Some people think they're having an affair. I nod, letting the words sink in. The betrayal that once burned in my chest now fuels my resolve. Each time I see Lisa, I can sense her growing paranoia. 
the phone calls she takes in hushed tones, the glances exchanged with co-workers, I relish it all. One evening, as I return home, I find her sitting at the kitchen table, her face drawn and tired. We need to talk, she says, her voice trembling slightly. About what? I reply, leaning against the counter, arms crossed. People are saying things at work, she starts, searching my face for signs of understanding. I don't know who's spreading these rumors, but it's affecting my reputation. I feel like everyone is watching me. Isn't that what you wanted? I ask, my tone dripping with sarcasm. You wanted to play with fire, and now it's burning out of control. That's not fair, she snaps, her eyes flashing. I didn't ask for this. I made a mistake, and I'm trying to fix it. Can't you see that? Fix it? I laugh bitterly. You think this is about fixing things? You've already shattered everything between us. I'm just giving you a taste of your own medicine. She looks wounded, the fight draining from her. What do you want from me? I want you to realize the cost of your betrayal. You think you can have your cake and eat it too? I step closer, my voice low. You're going to feel every ounce of this. Please, she begs, tears forming in her eyes. I'll do anything. Just tell me how to make it right. But I don't want her to make it right. I want her to suffer. I want the betrayal to sink in, to become a part of her existence. You can't undo what you did, I say coldly. And now, you're going to pay for it. The days that follow are laced with a tense anticipation. I push the rumors further, ensuring they reach Tom. I watch as he starts to distance himself from her, the once confident smiles fading. I relish the moments when I catch her on the phone, desperately trying to explain herself, her frustration boiling over. Finally, the moment I've been waiting for arrives. I orchestrate a meeting between Tom and Lisa, inviting them both to a casual dinner under the guise of reconciliation. As they arrive, I can see the tension in Lisa's shoulders, the way she avoids Tom's gaze. Hey, thanks for coming, I say, feigning cheerfulness as they sit down. I thought it might be nice to clear the air. Tom nods, but I can see his discomfort. Lisa fidgets, her fingers dancing on the table. What's going on? she asks, her voice tight. I thought we could talk about the rumors, I say, letting the words hang in the air. You know, the ones about your special friendship. What? Lisa's eyes widen, the panic evident. People are saying you two are getting too close, I continue, watching her squirm. But it's all just hearsay, right? Tom's face pales, and I can see the realization hit him. Is this why you wanted to meet? He asks, looking between us. Of course not, I say, keeping my tone light. I just thought it was important to address the situation. Lisa's face flushes, anger mixing with fear. This is ridiculous. We're just colleagues. You know that. Are we? I ask, leaning back with a smirk. Because everyone else seems to think differently. Tom shifts uncomfortably, glancing at Lisa. I didn't know you were having issues, Lisa. You should have said something. Don't put this on me, she snaps, her voice rising. This is all. Me. I cut in, my voice suddenly cold. You brought this upon yourself. You thought you could betray me and come out unscathed. The tension thickens, and I can see the cracks forming in their facade. Maybe it's time for some honesty, I say, my tone lowering to a dangerous whisper. Because I know everything. Lisa looks between us, confusion morphing into dread. What do you mean? Let's just say I've had my ears open, I say, the smirk never leaving my lips. And you both underestimated me. You thought I wouldn't find out. This was never just a harmless fling. Tom's face darkens. What are you saying? I'm saying that you both need to be prepared for the fallout, I say, relishing the chaos brewing in the room. You thought you could play me for a fool. 
Now the whole office is watching, and soon, everyone will know the truth. Lisa's expression shifts from anger to desperation. You're insane. You're ruining everything. Everything was already ruined the moment you decided to betray me, I snap back, my voice filled with venom. With that, I stand up, the satisfaction of my revenge coursing through me. Enjoy the dinner, you too. I hope you enjoy the fallout just as much as I will. As I turn to leave, I hear their voices raised behind me, the sound of betrayal and anger echoing in the air. I step outside, the cool night wrapping around me like a cloak. I feel powerful, exhilarated. But as I drive away, a gnawing sense of emptiness settles in. I may have gotten my revenge, but at what cost? The following days are filled with chaos. Rumors fly, relationships fracture, and the office becomes a battlefield. Lisa's reputation crumbles, colleagues she once trusted turn their backs. The satisfaction I once felt begins to sour. When I finally see Lisa again, it's at a company meeting, and the atmosphere is thick with tension. She approaches me, her face pale, anger replaced by despair. You did this, she says, voice trembling. You ruined my life. I gave you what you deserved, I reply coldly. You've destroyed us, she whispers, tears streaming down her face. All because of a moment of weakness. Don't pretend it was just a moment, I shoot back. You made your choice. You chose him. I chose the excitement, she admits, her voice cracking. But I never wanted to lose you. I never thought it would come to this. Too late for regrets, I say, feeling the weight of my own words. As she walks away, I realize that the path of revenge has left us both shattered. The darkness I sought to unleash has consumed everything we built together. I'm left with a hollow victory, the bitterness of betrayal tainting my soul. Days turn into weeks, and I find myself standing alone in our old favorite spot, an empty cafe that used to buzz with laughter and life. I think of the love we once shared, how it was snuffed out by betrayal and resentment. I leave the cafe, and as I walk away, I know we are truly parted forever. The hatred and deception that defined our final moments will haunt us both, a tragic reminder of the love we lost to a single act of betrayal. In the end, revenge has only left behind a wasteland, and I realize too late that I've become the very thing I despised.